government formation in Maharashtra now depends on Congress. Interim Party Chief Sonia Gandhi asks state leaders to take the final call. President Ramnath Kovind addresses Vishwa Bharti convocation, says Tagore's teachings fulfill inner urges of human self. Union Minister lays foundation of Borpeta Bagbar Road in Assam, says roads in every village is a government priority. Thousands of faithful join annual Eucharistic procession in Shillong. Cardinal Charles Bo from Myanmar attends as main celebrant. And in cricket, men in blue demolished Bangladesh in third T20 match by 30 runs, clinch series 2-1. Good evening viewers and a warm welcome to Northeast News. I'm Chongamla Tumra and now the details. In National News First, the Congress has called Maharashtra state leaders at 10 Janpat today to take a final call on extending support to the Shiv Sena to form government in Maharashtra. Meanwhile, Shiv Sena Chief Udav Thakre also called Congress Interim President Sonia Gandhi today. This comes after NCP, the Congress ally in Maharashtra, had agreed to come together with the Sena on the condition that they later cut ties with BJP, quit NDA and evolve a common minimum program. Meanwhile, Shiv Sena Chief Udav Thakre, accompanied by his son Aditya Thakre, met NCP President Sharad Pawar in Mumbai to discuss the ongoing political impasse in the state. The Sena Chief will hold another round of meeting as it is awaiting official confirmation from the Congress in this regard. On the other hand, Union Minister of Heavy Industries and Public Enterprises and Shiv Sena MP Arvind Savant today resigned from the Union Cabinet as a party prepared to stake claim in Maharashtra. बीजेपी के साथ सरकार बनाने के लिए अनिच्छा व्यक्त की इच्छा नहीं है ऐसा कहा इसलिए अब हम in more national news, President Ramnath Kovin has said right education is the key to national regeneration. Addressing the annual convocation of Vishwa Bharti University in Shantiniketan of West Bengal this morning, Kovin threw light on Tagore and Mahatma Gandhi's visions regarding education. Paying rich tributes, he said Gurudev taught people to live in a manner which will fulfill the inner urges of the human self. For this purpose, Gurudev felt it necessary not only to train minds of the students through disciplines like philosophy, literature or history, but also to engage their souls with music, painting and fine arts, besides paying attention to rural reconstruction and village welfare. The President also recalled the contribution of Mahatma Gandhi on formation of Vishwa Bharti and its progress, giving his full support to Tagore's and Diva. I bow to the founder of this great seat of experiments in learning and living. Defence Minister Rajnath Singh today said Prime Minister has set a target of a $5 trillion economy by 2024. Speaking at the Deaf Connect, organized to showcase accomplishments of innovations for defence excellence in New Delhi, Singh said that with the talent the country has, India will become a $10 trillion economy within 10 to 15 years. He said he feels a sense of pride looking at the startups today and stressed that passionate incubation is needed for the initiative. The minister claimed that India will excel in defence innovation in the coming years. The conference aims to bring together all stakeholders of the innovations for defence excellence IDEX Ecosystem, Ministry of Defense, IDEX Selected Startups, Partner Incubators, Defense Innovation Organization, Nodal Agencies, Defense Research and Development Organization, and Defense Public Sector Undertakings and Indian or Ordinance Factories. Moving on to Northeast now, in Assam, Union Minister of State for Social Justice and Empowerment Ramdas Athwale today laid the foundation stone of Borpeta Bagbar Road at Borpeta. The length of the road is 27.5 km. Total cost for widening and improve in improvement of the road will be 96 crore rupees. Addressing the gathering on the occasion, Athwale said transparent and good quality work is a primary focus of his government and development of roads is always a priority. National highways are being 
being constructed to boost economic development of the country. Atwale said the government is emphasizing construction of roads in every villages and towns. The minister also said various developmental schemes are being implemented in the northeastern region and construction and improvement of roads is one of them. In Meghalaya, a large number of faithful belonging to the Catholic Church of Shillong Archdiocese took part at the annual Eucharistic procession in the capital town on Sunday. The Holy Mass held at Caval Calvary in Laitungkra marked the annual celebration Eucharistic procession of the Archdiocese. In keeping with his promise to late Archbishop Dominic Jala, His Eminence Cardinal Charles Bo, Cardinal of Myanmar, was the main celebrant at the Holy Mass, which began at 10 a.m. Four bishops of the Northeast, including Bishop Victor Lindo and Archbishop Thomas Menam Parampil, and many other priests, were the co celebrants. The Holy Mass was followed with the Eucharistic procession in the afternoon. Legendary singer Lata Mangeshkar was admitted to the intensive care unit ICU of the Bridge Candy Hospital in the early hours today after she complained of breathing difficulties, hospital sources said. The singer, who turned 90 on September 28, is in a critical condition, they said. She was brought to hospital at about 2 a.m. Mangeshkar, who has lent her voice to thousands of songs in Hindi alone, was awarded the Bharat Ratna, the highest civilian award in honor in the country in 2001. In Assam, the Sarbajanin Durgatsav Ujjapan Committee today celebrated its second anniversary of Fateha Dwaj Doham at Bipanan Khetra, Panjabari, Guwahati. The program began with the recital of the Quran. Senior journalist Prasanta Rajguru delivered a speech on the outline of, the, of religious amity in Assam, festival of followers of Islam and their contribution to Assami society. <laughs> In Assam, the annual Ras festival is being celebrated across the state with religious fervor and enthusiasm. Idols of Radha and Krishna were installed at panels set up by celebration committees, followed by ceremonial lighting of lamps. After morning prayer and religious rituals, the Bhagavad was recited in some places. Various religious and cultural programs are also in schedule in panels along with Ras Lila of Lord Sri Krishna with an intention to increase the footfall of visitors. In Meghalaya, the 14th edition of Wine Festival was held in Shillong with the objective of creating a wider platform for the indigenous winemakers. Winemakers from across the state took part in the event, who put on display varieties of locally made wine. Convener of the organizer, Michael Siam, said that in the coming years, more such platforms will be created for the budding entrepreneurs and which in turn will generate bigger market opportunities. Still in Meghalaya, social issues like drug abuse, child marriage and values dominated the discussions held the, during the mass awareness program at Umden Nonklu in Ribhoi district. Aimed at bringing peace and harmony in the district, speakers from the police department, St. Anthony's College, Nongpo MLA Marla Bronsiem and Public Health Centre dwelt upon the do's and don'ts that can lead to a healthy life. And in sports news, India beat Bangladesh by 30 runs in the third and final T20 cricket in Nagpur last night to clinch the three-match series 2-1. Put to bat first, India scored 174 runs with a loss of five wickets in the stipulated 20 overs. Chasing the target, the visitors were all out for 144 in 19.2 overs. Pacer Deepak Chahar claimed the best ever 2020 international bowling figures of 6 for 7. 27-year-old Chahar also became the first Indian bowler to claim a hat-trick in the shortest format of the game. Chahar won the Man of the Match and Man of the Series awards. 
In women's cricket, teenager Shafali Verma scored her second consecutive half century to help India register an emphatic 10 wicket win over the West Indies in the second T20 international at St. Lucia. The 15 year old Shafali continued her impressive run by scoring a quick fire 69 off 35 balls alongside Smriti Mandhana, who scored 30. The duo powered India to a 2 0 lead in the five match series last night. The Haryana teenager smashed 10 fours and two sixes. In the first match on Saturday, Shafali surpassed the iconic Sachin Tendulkar to become the youngest Indian cricketer to score a half century in international cricket. Moving on to football news, in Manipur, a grassroots football development program for players between 6 to 10 years, 9 to 10 years and 11 to 12 years was launched at Pakhangba Cultural Club Kwaketel, Mayai Koibi under the aegis of all Manipur Football Association. The opening ceremony of the program was attended by Moirangthem Ratan Kumar, President All Manipur Football Association and Chabungbam Ipo Bishak Singh, President Pakhangba Cultural Club, among others. In Nagaland, St. Xavier Higher Secondary School, Jaluki, celebrated its Golden Jubilee in the school premises with the theme Celebrating Our Past and Igniting Our Future with former Chief Minister and Leader of Opposition T.R. Ziliang as the special guest, Bishop of Nagaland, Reverend Dr. James Topil and NBSC Chairman Asano Sekose as the guests of honour. And finally, before we wind up, a recap of the headlines. Government formation in Maharashtra now depends on Congress. Interim Party Chief Sonia Gandhi asks state leaders to take the final call. President Ramnath Kovin addresses Vishwa Bharti convocation, says Tagore's teachings fulfill inner urges of human self. Union Minister Lay's foundation of Borpeta Bagbar Road in Assam says roads in every village is a government priority. Thousands of faithful join annual Eucharistic procession in Shillong. Cardinal Charles Bo from Myanmar attends as main celebrant. And in cricket, men in blue demolished Bangladesh by third in third T20 match by 30 runs, clinch series 2-1. And that brings us to the end of this evening's bulletin. Thank you for tuning in. Namaskar.